Managing feature requests is one of the most challenging aspects of building software. Without a clear process, valuable customer feedback gets scattered across social channels, meeting notes, and support tickets. This can make it difficult to track, prioritize, and ultimately build what your users need. One of the primary features we use to track and manage feedback from our users is customer requests. Customer requests capture the content of a user's original message, link to the source, and then associate it with the account information from their customer page, such as company size, plan, and revenue. Every customer request is linked to either a project or an issue. So let's say we receive a feature request from one of our customers. There are two main ways I can bring their request into Linear. First, if we receive the feedback through a support platform like Intercom or Slack, I can use those integrations to share the feedback directly into Linear. From Intercom, for example, I have the option to either create a new issue with the customer request linked to it, or link it to an existing issue or project. Alternatively, I can manually add a customer request directly from their customer page in Linear. I'll enter the details of their feedback and add a link to its original source. Then I'll link it to the project or issue it's related to. If there isn't one yet, I'll create a new issue. By default, this issue will be assigned the triage status and will land in the team's triage queue where a PM or project lead will review it. Now that the customer's request is logged in Linear, let's talk about how it gets prioritized and implemented. After an issue containing a customer request is initially triaged, we'll begin prioritizing it alongside other requests using custom views. For example, if I'm interested in building functionality for enterprise customers, I might filter for all issues with customer requests from users on our enterprise tier. Then I might order that list by customer count to understand which features have been requested the most often. I can also see the aggregate current revenue of the customers requesting the feature by hovering over the customer icon in the issue. As we continue to collect feedback about specific features, we have a few options for how to keep them organized. We can add them to their relevant issues or projects as we saw before, or from a project, we can view all customer requests related to the project as well as to the issues within it. If there's no project created yet, we can also organize customer requests linked to issues by adding them to the team responsible for the feature's product surface. We could even create a dedicated team to capture more general customer requests that would be moved to the right team or project later. Once we start working on a project, we'll use the customer's page in the project as a kind of research repo to inform our approach to it. As we design and build, designers and engineers can refer to customer requests to validate their ideas better, understand real-world use cases, and identify users to interview for feedback. From the perspective of a customer-facing teammate, the customer page is a helpful tool to track progress on each customer's request. If I want to follow a specific customer, I'll subscribe to their customer page to be notified whenever new requests are added. Before renewal conversations, I might review the status of key feature requests and prepare updates on what's shipped or in progress. When a feature request could impact a major account's renewal or expansion, I'll mark it as important to signal its business impact to the product team. By capturing all user feedback on one shared platform, organizing it for discovery, collaboratively prioritizing it, and centering your customers' voices at every step of the way, you'll build a product that your customers really need and that actually solves their problems.